Thank you very much. My name is Emil. Timo is escaping. Uh, my name is Emil Enström. I'll be here uh, mainly talking, and Timo will talk a little bit also here today. Very nice to see so many of you here. Um, wow, even my even my boss is here. This is <laughs> this is quite the event. Uh, I have to behave now. Um, okay, so so we're here talking about the the how how we use the QGIS with 3D tiles uh, in, in Helsinki uh, in the beginning of, of this year. First, a little bit about where we are from. So we come from a company called uh, Gispo. Uh, we say it with this G that is like G. It's a bit like when you're choking uh, on something and you have to say G. So try to say it like that, Gispo. Uh, Gispo is also fine. Um, yes. So we're a consulting company, founded in 2012, uh, been around in Finland since then and in Sweden since 2023. Roughly 25 people, um, and uh, we do consulting with only op or mostly only uh, mostly only open source software, um, and and we also develop software, QGIS plugins, and then we do lots of training. So um, QGIS trainings, PostGIS trainings, GeoServer, um, QField, Mergin, you name it. Uh, if it's open source and GIS, we can consider train you in it. Um, and we, of course, support our, our customers in many different ways. We have a support service as well that people use. So when you need help with your QGIS, uh, you can always contact us. OK, and um, so about this particular project. It was a project uh, by the Mobility Lab Helsinki. And the Mobility Lab Helsinki is a test bed for smart mobility funded by the city of Helsinki's Innovation Fund. Easy to remember. And uh, so it's, it's basically uh, the, the city of Helsinki that is, that is kind of the, the main, main driver here. Um, and, and this was done in, in collaboration with Forum Virium Helsinki, which is this innovation company uh, by, owned by the, the city of Helsinki. Um, and the title, as you can see there, Development of a Digital Twin for Mobility, is kind of the main big uh, thing here that we are, are doing. So uh, the Mobility Lab uh, enables real-world real piloting for smart mobility solutions. Um, the central focus for was the, the like um, digital, like mobility digital twin, and how to make use of, of data that's already there um, in a more innovative ways. Um, this was done in the beginning of this year, three months project uh, with uh, me, Timo, and and Mary, who is also here in the audience today. And um, I have to to state this out uh, word by word. So the the goal was to explore and test new methods such as artificial intelligence for information modeling of the current state of street environments and street access management. Um, and three companies were selected for this, and as you might have guessed, we were one of those three companies. Um, about the, the pilot. So um, a bit about the background. Helsinki has quite a lot of nice uh, data uh, and also very nice 3D data. Um, they publish it as 3D tiles, so you can actually go and check it out at the, the karta.hel.fi slash 3D. Um, it's all there in the portal. Um, but how, even though it's there and it's really cool to look at, you can, you can check out your favorite inner courtyard in, in Helsinki. Uh, it's not very actively uh, used. Uh, so, so the idea here was that we would kind of um, try to, to figure out the, the, the ways in how we could get people to, to use it more, and, and especially the, the city officials to use it more. And since QJS 3.34, uh, we have the support for 3D tiles. Big thanks for that. Super cool, cool feature, at least in our opinion. Um, so, so by using QJS and, and the already 3D tile data that's available, we wanted to kind of combine these two and see uh, what we could make out of it and if we could 
perhaps get uh, city officials to actually um, use the data more in, in more uh, effective ways. And, and of course, here we could promote QGIS as a great software for using 3D tiles. Uh, I've been talking about 3D tiles already for some time, but I haven't even explained what it is. Um, but mo many of you probably know, and, and most of you probably better than me, but uh, 3D tiles, or, or uh, as it is now an OGC standard, uh, OGC 3D tiles is, is an open standard for streaming and rendering large-scale three-dimensional geospatial data sets. So um, many cool um, web platforms that need 3D data can use 3D tiles. And, and this is so important that I mentioned it now the second time, so QGIS supports 3D tiles since version 3.34. You can read more about the standard uh, in detail from, from OGC's uh, web page. And I believe here is, is more about what we uh, did in, in Helsinki. So um, we talked to some people uh, at the, the city and, and we tried to find uh, the, the use cases for, for this 3D uh, data. And we found that, that uh, there's a need for, for also using this 3D data in, in, in city planning at different scales, so, so using it in, in detailed plans, general plans uh, for analyzing flood risks and, and other analysis. Um, and uh, we also uh, talked a lot with, with some, uh, we had some architects and some planners of the city and, and uh, we tried to come up with, with ideas of how they could use it and, and uh, uh, perhaps uh, use it through through QGIS. Um, they came up with some interesting ideas about what they thought they could need it for. Um, some said that that we would like to be able to have 3D data and create a hole in the ground and uh, to see if, if we need to dig out over here, then what, what would it look like in reality? And can we then present it to someone and say that this is what it will look like when we have opened up the street completely? Um, uh, sometimes uh, they had the, like a th an idea of, of using 3D data for removing certain things that, for example, in somewhere you were about to cut down the trees and then you could show that this is what it will look like when we have cut down the trees. Um, lots of the city officials used lots of different software, uh, not at all, all open source, some, uh, but not all. and, and um, Many saw kind of the need for um, like moving between uh, one software to another and then to a third and might even lastly into an Excel sheet or something. And uh, so, so there was kind of this, this desire for a better interoperability between softwares. Maybe something that we couldn't address uh, f like fully in, in this project, but still a very kind of important point uh, to acknowledge that, that in, in municipalities there are plenty of different softwares that they use and, and often they need to move between them. Um, some that had actually used uh, QGIS uh, saw QGIS as kind of a viewing tool for, for 3D data, but not as, as much else. Um, and and they also, we also talked about what kind of 3D data they would like to have. Uh, in the future, what they saw could be useful. Here's a, a, a short list of, of some things. Traffic signs, uh, which we actually then, or Timo actually created and, and is going to soon talk about. Um, flood areas was something that many people saw could be very useful in 3D um, to, to be able to kind of see the, the impact uh, from another point of view. Um, fences and other small structures that, that uh, can disrupt walkability was, was found uh, interesting to be having in 3D um, power line uh, and these kind of masts or towers for telecommunication was also something that that they didn't di did uh, desire to have as, as 3D data. Um, some possible future uses that we talked about were, were having uh, detailed plans or, or plans in general uh, in 3D so that if you could like now when you have a land use plan, uh, it's always a, a 2D kind of uh, uh, presentation. So then to have it in 3D would be something that they also thought, thought could be beneficial. And um, 
They also saw that there could be an increase in public participation if you could have this kind of 3D um, land use plan uh, published somewhere, for example, on, on, an, on a web platform, and then uh, people from the public could uh, access that web platform, see that, okay, here near my house, they are going to cut down lots of stuff and build new houses, and my uh, balcony is going to be completely in the shade in the future, and then they could maybe see the impact of what uh, future um, plans could, um, like how, how it could impact their own own life. So perhaps it could increase also their participation in putting a comment there that, okay, this is maybe not what I, I would like, and, and uh, yeah. And now I think it's, it's time to move on to the creation of 3D tiles with Timo. Go ahead. Thank you, thank you. <coughs> I want to try the toy here as well, because I was taught, told how it works. <laughs> so, uh, hi, my name is Timo uh, from Gispo, same company, or Gispo as we say, in Finland. And uh, my role in this, this project was to uh, try out this uh, fancy new tool, or I don't know how, how new it is, but uh, for creating instanced uh, 3D tiles. And uh, uh, the city of Helsinki, or, or Forum Virium, uh, the company owned by the city of Helsinki wanted to try uh, traffic signs. So um, obviously they have traffic signs data in kind of 2D in, in point format. So all over all over Helsinki. And uh, uh, what I did then was to kind of grab that data and uh, put it in a database for this uh, nice tool that I used. Uh, what was it called again? i3dm.export. I don't know, has any one of you heard of it before? Okay, someone has. <laughs> So good. It's a .NET uh, project, so maybe not that common, common a technology used there, but uh, worked very well with uh, PostGIS. So what I did in, in, in basic, I got the features from the web feature service, very simple stuff with curl, and then just put that da same data into uh, PostGIS and uh, used a bit of Blender. That was the first time for me. and. Uh, how are we situated here? The picture on your left is the 3D model of a, of a traffic sign uh, with the pedestrian and, and bicycle lane or something like that. And uh, the other picture on, the, on your right is uh, that same uh, modeled traffic sign with the uh, rasterization or texture of that specific sign on the uh, again, on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side, you can see a kind of empty traffic sign. So there were two kinds of traffic signs, the ones that are actually uh, rasterized and texturized and uh, ones that uh, are just plain empty. So in, in this pilot, I only, only tested one. But uh, the tool worked very well. Uh, I don't think I had any, any issues. Some small transformations had to be done for the data so that the tool would kind of, kind of eat it well. So I made a new table out of the data and just picked, picked the things that were needed for, the, for this uh, tool, tool that I used. But I guess, yeah, that's pretty much my part in this pilot was rather small, so I'll give the floor back to Emil. Thank you. Um, yeah, let's jump into the, to the kind of QGIS uh, part of this. So, so uh, basically, if, if there's someone here who's interested in, in using 3D tiles in QGIS. Here's a quick uh, kind of some quick quick ideas about that. Uh, so basically, you just add the the 3D tiles uh, through this new scenes connection button. Um, you can find it in the browser or, or wherever you choose to to uh, make your connections from. Um, and then after that, you get the data added. So you have to know your, your tile set JSON uh, uh, location. So uh, we used it from, from straight from, from uh, the Helsinki um, like server, so, so we used that. And, uh, but you could also have local files uh, that you could use uh, for that. We also tested it locally. Um, and then you can open up uh, 3D view, and then you can just zoom around. Well, you can, might stumble into some uh, like uh, performance issues at times. I have some tips and tricks for, for that that I've um, come across. Um, but basically, you then have a, a really cool 3D view that you have can open up in, in uh, uh, that you've opened up in, in QGIS. 
And then you can combine this with also like 2D data, like any data that you have, and then I think you can get some some cool added value to uh, having a combination of, of 2D and 3D. Um, yeah, there's a link also there to our GitHub page. So everything we did, we basically put up to GitHub. So you can also go download this particular uh, project to, to test it out with the, like you have the connections there uh, from Helsinki. So you can go around Helsinki and, and look at the different places. Um, a few tips and tricks about how to use it in, in QGIS in a, in a nice way. Um, it's good to set the project extent uh, so that you don't load all the data uh, that you, uh, because if it's uh, the whole city, um, it's quite a lot of uh, stuff. So using the, setting the project extent to only the area that you're actually interested in is, is quite a good way to, to limit, um, limit the, the project. Um, use a digital elevation model as a terrain is, is quite a good tip if you want to uh, have kind of a more uh, uh, real life experience about it so that it's not as, as flat. Um, and for navigating, at least personally, I, I enjoy using the, the keyboards uh, instead of just the mouse. So you can like use the page down, page up, uh, holding down control and using the arrows to kind of zoom around to your right angle. Um, about setting, you have to also probably increase your network cache if you've had it for the, if you have only the default value, then it means that, that uh, you're, you're probably not, uh, or there's kind of like a, a bottleneck there about how much data it will store in the cache. So increasing it might be a, a good idea. We used around one GB just as kind of a test, test for that and, and, and it definitely sped up the process. Um, all right, and then then uh, maybe the most critical is, is is the graphics memory. So if you have a PC without a, a GPU, then um, consider another computer. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, check check your GPU. Check how how big it is and how much you are uh, willing to kind of let uh, QJS use of it. Um, we used. Uh, uh, 2 GB for, for this project is just, just having some number there, but basically it really depends on your computer. If you don't have a GPU, then you don't have a chance. Um, <laughs> no, you, you might have a chance, but, but yeah, you might have a chance. Let's leave it like that. Um, yeah, uh, it's, I think it's, it's a really cool way to kind of combine, like having um, in QGIS, you put like the 2D and the 3D windows kind of docked like next to each other because then you can kind of see where we are in 2D and, and also the 3D view at the same time. So that's a, a, a personal opinion of mine, but, but some other people might also enjoy that. Um, you can try it out yourself. Um, this is a screenshot for where, where I'm uh, digging out the tileset JSON uh, link from the city of Helsinki's page. But if you know another city or, or instance that uses a CCM portal like this, then you can basically open up the, like inspect the page and, and try to look for a tileset JSON uh, uh, file in there and then it will probably, or after testing a little bit, you might get uh, some files, uh, some tileset JSONs out of there and then you can just use that link in, in QJS and, and I've tested it for some other cities that I will not mention and uh, it works quite nicely. Um, yeah, uh, if you need to analyze your 3D tiles, then there's also this 3D tiles tools, uh, like set of, yeah, it's like a set of tools, it's on GitHub, uh, and it's, uh, we used it because we found that there were some issues with some of the 3D tiles that we used, so then we tried to use that for analyzing what's actually inside the 3D tiles, and it was a really cool, um, cool project, so I, I recommend checking it out if you, if you are interested in 3D tiles. And here's a short summary. So 3D is important in land use planning and for showing plans. Um, QGIS is super uh, nice when you can combine 2D and 3D data together and it can work with different data formats. And m perhaps it's not the best tool for working with 3D data yet, but we have seen many new features come also after 
uh, we did this project, so there's like lots of happening there. So we're definitely going to continue um, watching this. Uh, and instance tiles is valuable way of turning 2D data into 3D. And I'm not going to say the last point. Questions and comments. Many thanks. So yes, uh, we have room for questions still. Come on, crowd the room over there. This one is much closer, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I was just wondering, do you know which uh, 3D tile formats the QGIS right now supports? Timo. <laughs> well, it didn't support the instanced ones, so. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's supposed to uh, support those as well, but those, uh, is it called patched, patched model or something like that, the B, B3DMs, they are well supported, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know about the, is it points then, or, or, or what is it called, the third one? I'm not sure about that, but maybe someone else in the, in the audience. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, the patched model support. Okay, uh, hi, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I was wondering, uh, you mentioned about some wishes about, uh, for example, being able to edit the 3D uh, tiles. Uh, is there currently any like uh, things that you can do with it or is it only for viewing at the moment in QGIS? Um, I, I haven't checked the latest version because it came like last week, uh, but uh, I mean, there are some conversion uh, stuff in as tools, and I believe there are more tools coming as well. Um, but at least there were some conversion tools coming right after we, we started the, the project. There might be some, yeah. Um, yeah, my question is kind of similar to that. Did you consider exporting um, those 3D tiles to a format that architects or somebody in, um, I don't know, Beam editor uses so they can dig holes and and check out and prepare actually how it will be look um, when something is being built? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we we didn't. Um, I, I feel like it was maybe a bit out of the scope for, for this project, but this was definitely something that came up in our interviews with uh, the city officials that they have a very strong need for kind of this interoperability uh, because uh, some city planners really don't like QGIS because they haven't used it and they use other software and they and then kind of some some used it only for converting data formats for example and and then you know as a QGIS enthusiast it feels like a bit of a uh, like you know there's other stuff you can also do than just convert from a shape file to a geo package uh, with QGIS so so we have a long way to go with some some city officials of course yeah If uh, this is all, many thanks for more time and yeah, see you in the next talk.